Hi everyone, this is actually going to be video two, and this is going to be a more of a focus on machine language, or what's actually known as assembly language here, for the Atari home computer. And like I said, I've been getting, I noticed I've been getting a lot of following with the uh, machine language, uh, semi language uh, video, so I thought I would put some more videos out there, and for people to kind of look at. So, what you're looking at here right now is actually what's known as a DDT. It's built into the Mac 65 cartridge. It's basically a dissembler. Allows you to see your stuff in assembly code real time as it's happening. You can actually scroll through here and set locations and memory and see exactly what's going on here. Let me see if I can kind of um, change the location here. I'll change it to 2000. And when I change it here, watch what happens up here. So you just basically go into the location of hexadecimal 2000 in memory. I don't know where that is exactly from a decimal standpoint. But it's gone there and it's just showing you exactly what's going on in memory. So you can see stuff real time that's happening. And I think, um, well I don't know the hex I was going to see. It, but you know I could probably get it this way actually. You know what? Let me see. Let me see something here. This is my program I'm going to go over here in just a minute. You're probably itching to see what this thing does. It's a, it's a scroller. So if I can, um, trying to figure out how to maybe this is print. All I know is print. Oh boy, there it is. Okay, so this is the print command here. Let me move this over here so you can kind of get a better view of this. And it's gonna take me a while probably to get this thing focus again, so excuse me one second, just pivot it on me here, move it down, and that's not much better is it, I think it's reflecting off the light, I'm going to turn the light off again, sometimes the light background kind of screws it up, oh boy, let's see, the camera is really really weird too, it's like sometimes if the display comes in really good, sometimes it doesn't, so we're trying to figure out why, you see, I just barely moved it and it kind of just changed the coloring. Look at that now, it's not so out of focus. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. I had it really good earlier, didn't I? Like that, I guess. Let me see if I can adjust the cord back here. Maybe that'll help. There we go, that's all it was. Okay, so you can see that this location right here is um, what it's doing is it's printing a value. So it takes a value that you put on the screen. This is 88, and it's going to show you the hexadecimal translation for that which is 0058 and the string after it means it's hexadecimal so hexadecimal is just a way for the computer to easily read numbers instead of just printing in regular decimal numbers and I'm going to explain what these are in a minute so I'm like looking in the dark now um, oh boy 89 so 89 is just the next one up from this it's just going to show 0059 the reason why I'm showing you this is 88 and 89 are what are actually known as the screen coordinates in memory. And if you watched my last video, I actually had this book. I'm going to turn on the light again here for better um, display of this. This is a book I'm using real good for the Atari. It's um, called Map in the Atari by Ian Chadwick. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually peeking into location in this program, which I'll explain in a minute, 88 and 89 which is the screen coordinates so it's basically 88 and 89 is keeping track of all the, the um, excuse me the resolution and the pixels that you're seeing on the screen because this is actually being created by pixels and if you look here I'm going to do the best I can I usually have this up last time and I think people were able to see it you can get the PDFs on the internet too I'm going to hold it right there that's, that's actually pretty good there see what it says 88 89 SAV S-A-V-M-S-C I'll just kind of hold that there for a minute let me just remove my hand there so that's a little bit better it kind of gives a little program example but that's what's called the lowest address of the screen memory corresponding to the upper left corner of the screen where the value of this address will be displayed the upper left corner of the text window is stored at location 66661 and you see that right below where it says you can verify this for yourself by blah 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 with that window equals peak 88 plus peak 89 times 256 poke window comma 33 you look right below what it says you back up here a little bit maybe that'll <laughs> and it raises book more this will put the letter a in the upper left hand corner that's because 
the, the, the value of 33 that you're seeing there is actually the Axie character in memory for the letter A. So the reason why I'm showing you that is this is actually keeping track of the screen and that's what this program will do. So let me run the program right now. Oh, there goes my display again. Let me see here. Let's just try the chord again. Come on. It looks great over here, but it's not looking good on the camera now. I think it's the light again. Let me just turn it off. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna play the camera again. Try to get a real good picture here. But these videos go into like 20 minutes just trying to get this stupid camera to work. Oh boy, that's not much better, is it? Now it's all lopsided. Great. I think that's. You see that I like pressed it and it kind of went in and out. Sometimes if I move it, I found if I move it, play with this. So I'm trying to move it as close as I can, but I don't want to. Uh, that's the resolution. Just, I guess this coloring for this on Mac 65 cartridge is not very good. I don't know if you can see that. It's going to be really hard for people to see this. The last one came out so good. I can change the color of this background, but I have to um, kick it into memory to do it. Basically, I have to run it in the assembly code to change it. You can't do it directly from the interpreter here like you can at BASIC. I can add it into the program here. I'm going to do that right now. So let me get the... Um, where is the locator? I think it's 710. Okay, so 710 is where I'm going to peek into memory and I'm just going to black out the screen or just make it a, a color that's a little easier to see. Let me see here. I have to stick it right in the program here because this is the vertical blank interrupt so you can't stick it inside of a vertical blank. I'll explain all that in a minute. I'm going to find out where this starting starts at. Let's see. Actually, I already have it in here, so I have 0, 7, 10, so if I go to run this, it should automatically, it's going to black out the screen, so I think you might be able to see a little bit better here. I know it's coming up a little bit better on the screen here. I can see directly on my PC versus what's shown over here, and I can kind of compare it to make sure this display looks good. So, let me run this one and show you, and then I'll explain it. Where's the location again? It's in 8,000. Here's the whole program if you want to see. It's not very long. You know, wait, did I assemble it? That would help, huh? You gotta assemble a program. If you see what I just typed, ASM, that's the symbol that allow you to assemble the code just, just so the computer can find it in memory. Oh boy. And what I just did, remember I showed you earlier, I just set the location of where this program compiled in memory, which is at 8000 hexadecimal which is 32767 per decimal, if people want to know. And this down here, the G is a uh, shortcut mnemonic for just go, go to location 8000. So it's basically, what if you watch my, my, my basic videos, whenever you type the run command, that's what this is doing, except it's in assembly. It's not like basic where you can just run it because it's already got the compiled code in memory. This one has to know location in memory because you have to kind of set the pointer to exactly where it's going to be in memory. So when I set this pointer, it'll actually automatically run this program. So now it's actually running the program. I know it looks kind of weird here. <coughs> That's the whole point. I'm going to turn my light on again here. I want to show you something. This is a joystick, the Atari joystick. I've been showing this a few times to people. And it just basically allows you to go control like up and down. It works kind of like the gamepad, very similar. Also, like for example, for the uh, Xbox controller, except this is a little bit different, doesn't have all these different kind of buttons, but it works like these uh, controllers where you can move stuff up and down and stuff like that. So, when I'm moving this up, watch the screen here. Look, I know it's kind of, what it's doing is actually scrolling in memory right now and it's finding locations and it's shifting them around. So, if I move this down, you might not be able to see it, but watch, it changed. See, it changed a little bit move it that way. Now if I move it left, it's, gonna, it's not going to do anything because I'm already at, I think, no, there it goes, it's flipping over, that's right. So if I move it right, you'll see it kind of change again here. Kind of takes a little while. See how it's shifting over there? It's moving all the characters. It's shifting through memory through all the characters. There it goes. It kind of just changes and shows all these weird, you're looking at memory location shifting 
bytes in memory really fast at a very high rate. So this is actually known as scrolling and this is actually how they get the, the scrolling accomplished on the Atari computers you've ever seen games on for example on the Atari computer like um, Panther was one. I've actually had that on my channel. Panther shows a screen scrolling when you're moving a ship up the screen and it's moving it's basically moving the screen with the ship pixel by pixel. That's exactly what this is doing is sh it's shifting characters and memory very quickly. And that's how the scrolling is accomplished. The way you get the graphics is you have to change the character set and basically once you've changed the character set it looks pretty real time like, like there's an actual game going on or something. This is just a simple example to show that I created that allows you to shift bits in memory just to see kind of what's going on here. N notice up here it says page one. This is actually keeping track of what was on my screen previously because it's still looking at location peak 88, 89 which I showed you in that book. So it's still keeping track of where I previously was. So it's kind of cool. It's still got that in memory there. And I didn't erase the screen. That's why I kind of left it on the screen. If I erased it, you wouldn't even see that page one. But it's still shifting it in memory at this time. So we move it up and down. and That's basically all it does. And that's kind of boring for you. Like, what is this? But what you're looking at compared to the, the basic Atari Home Basic computer is if you had to do this in Atari Basic as an example, you could not. You could not get it to run this fast because Atari Basic compiles everything line by line, sequentially, so it's very slow because it's interpreting everything bit by bit based on timing or something like that. And what you're looking at is a very fa a fast processing. The Atari computer one I have is a 64-bit, so it's processing instructions extremely, extremely fast. In those days, it would be considered fast because that's how that's how the games kind of became very popular. You don't see a lot of basic games because they didn't have the speed that machine language or this is assembly language code makes those kind of things possible. So, like I said, I won't bore you too much with running this. That's basically all it does, but I'm going to stop it and kind of go over that. And to get out of this, all you have to do is hit the Q key. You probably won't, you might see it in for a second. Uh, you probably won't even see it, but it's just Q exit out BBT. And list is just like in basic. Uh oh, I just realized I just lost my camera here. So glad I can see this real time. Oh, I'm here. I'm gonna be trying to adjust this thing again. Oh, you're gonna make me so mad now. Come on. I'm so tempted to go in and just change the color and set it in ROM or something so it stays in there. Okay, I just saw it really good earlier. <laughs> Let's see if I tap it maybe. I'm using an HP camera, digital camera here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work very good. I don't know. Let's see. Let me just play the chord here again. Uh, see, it looks good over here, but it's kind of looking plenty over here again. So, And that's going to bug me. But for time's sake, I'm just going to go and roll with it because I can still see it over here. So I'm going to kind of... Maybe it's something... Um, I guess I still need to learn how to use this camera a little bit. I'm going to turn off the light again. Maybe that'll change something. Ooh, just went out of focus again. Okay, let's tap it, move it around, shift the monitor, and now it's totally gone. Look at that. Maybe I turned the light back on, huh? No, yeah, there was a second ago I just saw it. Yeah, I'm so stuck with this because unfortunately I have no way to really record the audio on the Atari and translate it to a PC. So, hopefully you can see this. <laughs> so here we are. And I created the program on August 11, 2007. That's, um, this is one of my newer additions to assembly language um, when I was learning about scrolling applications. This first line here, these are just uh, comments, allow you to put stuff in a code, like in any um, kind of computer program. If you saw in my Atari example, I, might, I think I had REM, which stands for Remark. It's just basically a way of putting comments in the program. You can stick them by itself to just set up a single line comment. <coughs> this OPT, dot OB, I'm sorry, dot OPT OBJ, is actually the object controller and it's actually passing information into, and this is going to probably lose some people, it's allowing the program to be translated as an object so that the computer can see it and translate it into memory. Yeah, like that made a lot of sense, huh? <laughs> and this OPT no list means don't show any of that code when you get, because you can actually set these lines and set OPT no list for certain lines that you don't want to show. I just say no list, <coughs> excuse me. So when I run it, it doesn't show the entire program and it, it compiles faster. This, I just demonstrated earlier, this is the counter 
is keeping track of where your program is going to start at hexadecimal 8000. So uh, to clarify that again here, let me go over here. I like to clarify things. So 32767, that's the decimal translation for that. And now i got to go ahead and list it again. Can't be running here. Oops. No shortcuts in assembly. You can't list anything in shortcut. Okay. And I just didn't realize the camera went out of focus again. Ooh. That actually came in real good there. <laughs> okay, so now this first line is... um. I think when I move my finger up here, it goes out of focus. This first line is this um, uh, declaration that I set for, uh, actually known as, um, I can't think of the, the exact assembly word for it. There's, I'm just going to call it a variable for right now, so I can't think of the word. I'll probably put it in the comments later once I look it up. Remember what these are called. It's been a while since I've played with this. But this is a VBI. It's a vertical blank interrupt. So it's going to allow something to happen simultaneous real time in the program in the background. So it's known as multitasking. And what this is doing is what I was showing you earlier. Oh, actually, no, I didn't show you this. So let me see. Load 18. I believe that's the timer. I'm going to refer to my book here again. I had a lot of these um, codes and locations memorized for many years. And since I haven't used it in years, I kind of forgot them. This is the real-time clock. You probably won't see this, but I hold it like that, maybe. Again, you can always get these PDFs on the Internet. People are going to hate me for this. Like, why are you always showing this book? Right there. It's the real time clock. So what it's going to do is it's keeping track of the clock that's going in memory and it's storing it in 712. This is just something I created to allow the border to be updated and stuff like that. And this jump 58466 is jumping to a, a place in memory. Let me look that location up. I know I don't have that one memorized. So 58466. And notice again I'm using the, um, the decimal number, not the hexadecimal. 58466. Alright, where did I skip it here? Kind of going through the, the book here basically. 58, 457. There we go. So this one, okay, here we go. It's right there. The book is shaking. A little closer, maybe. Okay, that's better. Right there. Ah. Stop shaking. Except when the vertical blank interrupts. So this is basically... Let me move it up a little bit there and over. Why well, is this so hard to hold? This is actually showing the vertical blank that's going on in memory. And it's just basically what it's doing is it's jumping out of the vertical blank. If you don't use this inside of a vertical blank, you can easily crash your program. So it's definitely recommended to use these. Okay, so the next thing here, this is um, another variable, we'll call it start, and this is to keep track of the go-to locators. You can name these anything you want, I just call this one start. It's loading the XY of the vertical blank that we set up earlier, so it's getting the address, which is, I think this is known as the high and the low, or this might be the low and the high, might have that backward. And it's keeping track of each of those, wherever those addresses are pulling in from memory, I can't show you this step by step because I don't have any way to print these numbers out to show you real time. But it's keeping track of the vertical blank addressing and it's storing this into this accumulator. It's storing it into the Y accumulator for this one, for this number. So the Y accumulator is going to hold a different number and the X accumulator, which is loading the X accumulator, is going to hold another number. So it's keeping track. It's pulling them out of memory to see what's in there. And then once it does, because in the accumulator there's an X, Y, and then there's just the accumulator value. So the accumulator value here, once it has those, it's going to set this to 7. And it's going to pass this to 58,460, which I believe activates it. And I'm going to double check that. 58,460. I know it's on the same page here. 58,460. Don't get so mad at me for doing this, but I just thought people would, might be able to see things real time and understand, you know, what kind of what's going on. I don't even this one even gonna work. Let's see. Okay, it was fine earlier. Now it doesn't even wanna there it goes. So it's setting the system timers during the vertical blank interrupt register for the most significant bytes of vector times. So let me just read through this real quickly. 
Yep, it's enabling the vertical blank, so I was correct. So it's basically setting up, and this is just how you set up a simple vertical blank in machine language. That's the first step. Let me scroll through here a little bit. Remember earlier when we were trying to get the screen to display because it's actually in a blue color? When I run the program, if I take this out, it'll actually, this will be blue. And let me, let me remark this out right now just to show you. I like to show people real-time stuff as it changes in the program so you can kind of learn from stuff. Okay, so that should be good. Oops, too fast. That's on now. I like trying to work in the dark. Where is that? There it goes. Now it's actually in blue. Instead, earlier it was in black. So it's basically keeping track of the color. And the screen is now just keeping track of the same color. So if I change it to something else as an example. Nope. Oh, you just see now it's all shown blue there. Probably oh, doesn't reset here. Oops. Now I just got to watch this camera too. It jumps out on me a lot too. I don't know if you've seen that earlier, but I'm going to change it anyway to another color to show you. Which, um, I know this is red for 50. Oh, did I do that right? It should have been red. Let me see if I assemble it. I assemble it? I don't know if I did. Well, not sure why that didn't work on that one. Let me see. I just lost my joystick. Here it is. Let's see. Alright. Well, so much for that one. Anyway, we'll come back to that. I can show you that later. It was supposed to change the two um, red, but it didn't work for some reason. <laughs> okay, so this next thing is just basically loading the accumulator of the, the most significant byte of the screen, which would have been 88, and it's storing it in a location which is 203, which is an empty location. You could store anything in 203 and 204. And if you want to look in the book, you can look it up on the internet, or once again, I can show you. If people don't like this, I probably won't do this in future videos, but I thought you might want to know that 203... Oh boy, come on. Right there. It's unused by the basic or the assembler cartridge is what it's basically saying there. So you can use those locations freely without any trouble. Okay, so you can store those to keep track of where the screen is. And then the next thing it's going to do here, after it has those locations stored in 203 and 204, it's going to do a loop here. If you've ever seen any of my um, editor assembly videos, I kind of explain what a loop does. This is setting the load the X register starts at 4, so you've got to start it somewhere. You can put this up to 255 and as low as 0, but it can never go over those. And then you set the X register, and when you're accumulating, you not only use the X register, you use the Y register. And I set this one to 0 so I can get... I think this is uh, peeking into another location, but I'd have to um, see which location it is. It's probably in the screen somewhere. I could probably explain that in another video. I'll explain that in the comments too if I come across that, hopefully. And what this is doing is it's setting those locations. And it's setting, um, these are, again, the, um, well, I wish I could think of that name. These are keeping track of, you know, where stuff is going to in the program, kind of like the go to. I don't remember what RP stands for, repeat, I think. And this is fill, yeah, repeat because it's going back here. So this is known as fill, so it's going to basically fill the screen, as you saw it earlier, fill on the screen. So what it's doing is it's taking the X1, and starting right now, the X1 does not have a value in it until I change it. So when you put X1, it's just going to be zero, anytime you set up a variable. And it's going to end the accumulator by that value that you just stuck in there. These ones will probably lose you, so I might have to go into more explanation about these ones later. As it switches the value and switches the bits out, it's going to then or what's in the accumulator, which is I think it's the reverse of n, and it flips them from ones to zero, zeros to ones, and it's going to set that to five, and it's going to store it in the location we saved earlier, which was in 203, and set it in the y. So this is actually going and keeping track of the entire screen is what it's basically doing. It's keeping track of everything going on, on the screen at the same time, and here's where the interesting stuff kind of starts happening. 
what I'm doing now is I'm setting a variable I just call TM I'm trying to see has it equaled one yet and this means branch not equal and I just put NT yet so like not yet so I just kind of shortened it so if the branch is not equal we're gonna jump down here that means if you haven't hit one continue going through the program and this is kind of where it all happens here and it's going to keep incrementing x1 so let me go down here I know this is probably going to go over a lot of people's head if you don't know anything about assembly but I just thought I would go over these because I seem to getting a lot of popularity on these ones it's going to say not yet so it's going to increment you know what? I'm going to go back to screen here it's going right off the screen I didn't want it to do that so let me see uh, right, oh gosh darn it, do it one more time, right, that should be good, okay so right here is it's going through there, I was just trying to get all these showing up on the screen at the same time, it's going to increment the Y register which is zero so that means now it's going to be a one, and increment TM which earlier was a, a zero here, and it's now going to be two, and it's going to say, is the branch not equal to it? Is it still going through this branch, basically? And if it's not, it's going to go back to fill the screen. So it's going to keep basically filling the screen with new characters as they're coming through. And that's what this is doing, is it's creating a character and throwing it to the screen, random characters. And it's incrementing them through it with this TM value here. And right here, it's incrementing through the high and the low bit. This is the low. I believe this is the low and this is the high. So it's going through all those characters as they show up and it's decremented the X register to keep track of um, where it's being set and I think it's in the high byte, let me see X1 oh no that's just keeping track of the, the whole loop basically so keep going through the loop so now dec DEX means decrement the X register so it starts at 4 so if you decrement the X register 4 is going to become 3, 2, 1 and so on and if this branch is not equal, you're going to repeat and go back and kind of keep going through it. That's what allows it to keep showing all those characters real time on the screen as you saw that earlier going on. Um, let me scroll down here again. <coughs> okay, good. I'm at the end almost. Okay, now I'm probably losing a lot of people by now, but hopefully not. Okay, so what it's going to do next here is it's going to load the Y register with 80. Remember, you can always set these values. I just set this one to 80. Load the X register with 25. And I set up a new um, a variable name here or whatever, go to line, called SLW, which this is going to be slow. So what this is doing, it's a loop to slow down the program. I'll take this out earlier and show you what will happen if I don't have this in. Remind me, not, remind me to show you that in one second. So this is keeping track of it, and it's incrementing through the team as it's going through here. And these are just... Um, locations where you can store variable names I have trick here for load 644 and I'm not going to pull that book back up in front of the screen because people are probably going to get irritated with that the map, map in the Atari but this is keeping track of if you press the button or not and if you haven't it's going to go all the way back to the top this means branch not equal but right? if you have it's, it should jump out of the program and these are just some um, accumulator or pointer values for X1 and TM that you saw me using earlier so let me go ahead and see if I can um, comment this out Hopefully it doesn't crash. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Hopefully it doesn't find any mistakes. Let's see. Over increment, range not equal. Okay, let's try that. in the dark. You see that? It's moving super, super fast. Nothing like it was earlier. This is how blinding fast the Atari Simony language can be and why it's an amazing tool. Look, it's moving so fast. I mean, it's going to give people a heart attack just looking at it. So if you're one of these, um, just be careful. <laughs> I'm not responsible for putting people in the hospital because I know some people will be like, but can you just think about it right now? This is how fast the assembler is working. I mean, it's finding. There's no way I can even look faster than the naked eye. It's just, it's just insane. That's why I put the loop in the program so you could actually see the characters. And here it's going to put you in the hospital just looking at them. I mean, look at this. It's like pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I just thought this program would be kind of cool to show people. This is how fast. I wish you could sit here and 
right here with me right now and just look at it because it looks a lot different than what you're seeing over here. I mean, it's moving super, super fast. So, <laughs> but it's just shifting through those characters that I showed you in that program earlier in that loop, basically. The TM is um, shifting through the next character in memory at a super fast rate. There's 255 actually characters in the Atari, um, well, in the Atari computer, so. And pretty amazing. That's just a, a simple example of um, a scroller. I thought I'd give some people some tips. Like I said, I like to share tips. And I'm still curious to see if I can get that color to change. Bear with me for an irritating moment. 215. I'm going to change it to um, 150 to see what happens. not going to work. I was not trying to change that screen. Maybe I can change the border. Let's see if I can change the border. Um, 265. Storage. 12. You also need this keyword called RN. Renum. It just renumbers the, the max 65 code in order. It's basically the way I put in an order or sort in it. So, it doesn't have that in there anymore. It kind of just went through and it just sorted it. Right there, it was 265, now it's back to 270. So. Let me see if it changes the border color, hopefully. <laughs> well, it did, and for some reason, I might have to get it in the vertical blank. I don't think it's actually finding it because it's um, inside, outside the vertical blank. So if I stick it in the vertical blank, it might work, maybe. I actually already have it in the vertical blank. I have it being stored in here, so it's basically changing here, so I need to change this. Why didn't I see that? <laughs> Let's see. I change, oops. Number. Finally, see I changed the border red this time, so I had to do it because it was operating inside the vertical blank and earlier it wasn't seeing any of that in the code because it's not looking at the code. It's only looking at the code when I move the joystick basically. So that's how you change the border. I could change it again to show you if you can see it. Let's see, 255 is the brightest color. in the lower character there. Now it's uh, a bright color, so. Okay, so that'd probably be it for this one. And for people who are interested, you know, and this is again the, the Max 65 cartridge. Let me um, kind of pivot the camera here to show you. I don't know if you can see it. I think it's stuck in this corner. If you see this plugged in right here, this is the Mac 65 cartridge. So, without the Mac 65 cartridge, you'll just be running in BASIC because it'll automatically default the computer to BASIC. So, but this is just a sh simple, short example. The next uh, assembly tutorial I wanted to show you to show you how to how fast uh, machine language can really be. Once you really understand it and the amazing things you can really do with it, I had a lot of fun. Um, if you go on my channel, there's a game I have a machine language game called Dead Man. I had um, to rebuild this application because I lost the original code years ago when I lost my Atari programs. And then several years later, I saw one on eBay and decided that I was going to go ahead and get back into this. Uh, I saw um, a need for it, I guess, on the internet and wanted to share my passion with it with people. So basically, this program I wrote was an amazing game. It took me a year to design it and it probably had about, I think it was probably about 70 different screens. So did a lot of weird stuff. It had bats in it, it had giant spiders, and it had even in. I completely finished it. There was you had to get to the goal was to take this man and get him all the way up, going up these ladders and everything, to get to the roof and avoid all these um, these adversaries that were after you. So, anyways, um, that's kind of where I'm going to leave it on this one. If you're interested, um, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. 
because I'll put more Atari videos up there if you're interested or whatever. And I just um thank you and for watching.